We're not clicking on any windows today. On this episode, it's all about typing. That's right, we're learning how to type stuff into a box today, and to get things out of it. This tutorial is best done interactively, so if you have a Windows command prompt ready, why don't you hit that Windows button, type CMD, right click it, and run it as an administrator, if you're allowed to of course, and pop open the prompt. Let's start by turning you into a professional. Execute the command, color02. Look at that, you're a professional. You don't even need me for this. I'm just kidding. You're not done here yet. Before we actually begin, here's some tips on how to use the command prompt to your best ability. If you want to know if you're on an elevated command prompt, check if you started on C, Windows, System32. This is a common way to signify it. You can move the cursor with the left and right keys. You can go through previous commands with the up and down arrows. This is good to do if you mess up on any commands or need to repeat some, and just change some stuff on it. You can use the tab key to finish things for you, like directories or commands. Command prompt is not case sensitive, but you might want to type everything correctly for the sake of transferring these skills to another kind of terminal. If you use spaces in anything that you type in, surround it in quotes. If you want to know more about a command, type help will give you commands you can use. CLS clears your command prompt. Let's talk about a common command format. This is how you label certain items in a command example. This is called the command. It is the main program you're attempting to use. In this example, DIR itself is a command. This is called a switch. A switch is used to change how the command works or interacts with what it is given. For the DIR command, adding dash A will list all contents, including hidden ones. And this is called an argument. An argument is used to give something to the command to work with. Keep in mind it doesn't always go in this exact order. If you want to see how a command wants it, simply add a slash question mark to the end of the command to see examples, information, switches, and how the command works. With directories, it's important to know the difference between absolute and relative path names. An absolute path name is the beginning to where exactly the item or folder is. A relative path name is when you are in the same folder. Say we need access to the file yi with notepad on C user desktop. Well, we are currently in C user desktop, so we simply need to do notepad yi and suddenly we have access to yi. Now that we have all those basics covered, let's talk about Windows commands with command prompt. The cd command is used to change directories. You can either use relative path names or opt in for the absolute path names. Remember you can use tab to auto complete your entries. Here's an example. The dir command will list the contents of the directory you're currently in. You're free to use relative or absolute path names to give it an argument, but by default, it will list the contents of the directory you are currently in. Switches for this command can be very useful. As an example, the echo command is used to repeat items back to you or to a file. There are additional uses for this that we will not be covering here. As an example, executing echo testing will have the command prompt read back testing. It can also be used to echo values. As an example, echo followed by percent %username percent will check the system for a value and repeat back the username of whoever executed the command. There are many values you can use for this, and this serves a purpose whenever you're scripting. We recently discussed networking, which is useful in this segment. IP config is used to check your IP configuration. This includes showing you your IP address, your MAC address, your subnet mask, and your default gateway, and many more details. You can use ipconfig slash all to check your full IP configuration. Ping is a utility used to test to see if you can connect or cannot connect to a certain IP address or domain name. It is simply ping followed by an IP or website. This can be useful for testing your connection. Here are some examples of the command in action. 
NS lookup allows you to identify where DNS information comes from and what the domain you input translates to for an IP address. This can be useful for checking for potential incorrect DNS records. As an example, DNS is used to translate domain names to IP addresses, right? Well, let's say every time you try to check a search engine like Google, Bing, or DuckDuckGo, you end up on Amazon. If your DNS record is modified so that every one of these websites will point to Amazon's IP address, there isn't much you can do other than correct your DNS record. Traceroute, or TraceRT as the command is typed, is used to see exactly where your packets travel. You can see every router it touches base with. This is called hopping. The command is as simple as typing TraceRT followed by an IP. The net user command is used to manage users on your system. You can add, delete, activate, and deactivate users. Another task commonly done is changing passwords. Please never ever type out the password in plain text. Keep in mind that when you add a user, they are not activated by default, so you will have to activate them. The net local group command is used to view and manage local groups on your system. You can add a user to a group, delete a user from a group, create groups, and delete groups. NetShare is used to share a folder. You can add shares and delete them. Normally, if you're not supposed to have shares, you should delete them all except for C$, Admin$, and IPC$, simply because they will come back and preventing them from coming back will need more advanced methods. The dollar in it signifies that the share is hidden from the network view. Net session allows you to view current remote connections to your system. The net accounts command is used to set a brief password policy. You can view an example of the command here. However, it is recommended that you set it through the local security policy, simply because there are additional options that you should be implementing through there, like not storing passwords and enabling complexities. The net use command allows you to connect to shares. Here's an example of the command in action. This command, net sh space adv firewall, is actually a part of a utility for network configuration. These firewall commands are useful because you can use it to reset your firewall to the default configuration or turn your firewall on or off. Netstat is used to view network statistics. You can check active connections, strange connections, and specific connections. Some switches to keep in mind would include dash A, dash N, and dash O. Dash A allows you to check active TCP connections with TCP and UDP ports and the program or machine it is specified to. Dash N allows you to view active TCP connections, but with the port numbers and IP addresses added. Dash O displays active TCP connections with PIDs. You can actually combine all of these into a single command with netstat A and O. An additional switch to keep in mind would be dash P with the protocol TCP or UDP specified. This will check for protocol specific results. Adding a number at the end of netstat will allow you to refresh it every certain amount of seconds. Ultimately, if you wanted a TCP specific netstat over a bunch of details every five seconds, you would simply type netstat dash A and O dash P TCP five. SFC is a system file checker. You can use SFC slash scan now to check for any inconsistencies within your system files. Let's review everything we learned today. The command line. Tips and tricks with the command line. Navigating the command line. Command line system tools. User and group modification. System modification. The default Windows command line language, Batch, is good, but PowerShell is far more powerful. Take a look into it if you're interested in learning a more efficient command line. In the next episode, we're taking an in-depth look into the Microsoft Management Console. Until the next one.